All right, so this is the May 16th patch notes. Uh, this just dropped earlier today. It says, please note, if you haven't updated your game yet, you get the latest one on the App Store. Uh, this has always been an, an, a problem with the app on your phone. Um, it's kind of a blessing and a curse, depending on what you're doing now. If you don't update, it won't, it won't force you to update the game normally until I think it's like a few days after the patch has dropped. So you can technically play with the... Um, the uh nerfed if the cards were nerfed you can play with the pre-nerf cards however you're going to be playing against other people who have the older version as well so you're going to be playing against people who have pre-nerf cards as well uh, i did this a few times actually uh months ago i don't know i think i don't think they've changed this behavior so uh but if you want to get the latest and greatest stuff you have to update it in the app store it will force you eventually but anyways look at the patch highlights it says kitty pride returns for those who didn't know kitty pride uh ruined the game in the sense that she she caused like a huge uh bug where uh, the game would just crash and it was, you know, um, it would just take a long time to recover and it happened to everyone. And even happened, I believe even would happen to people who weren't playing Kitty Pride games, who didn't have one in their deck and their, their opponent didn't have one in their, deck, in their deck, it wasn't on the board. It just was, it was creating a huge mess. mess. So they took her away and instead they uh, refunded anyone who bought her. I think they gave, her, gave them 9,000 or 8,000 or 9,000 tokens instead of 6,000. So they actually made some tokens in a sense. But what they did here is they ended up bringing it back. So Kitty Pride returns to Marvel Snap with a brand new ability. We'll grant Kitty Pride base card to all players. So everyone gets it. It doesn't matter which pool you're in at the, uh, or collector level. For new accounts created after this patch, Kitty Pride will be available in Series 5. So you can still get her if you do make a new account. However, you're going to have to wait for her or unlock her um, by paying tokens. But for those who made, I believe it's an account on the 15th or earlier, um, you will have her in your collection. You all, uh, for those who don't know, all you have to do is go to your collection and sort by uh recent and you should just see her right here you don't have to get her in the mail you don't have to like you know claim any link or anything like that she'll just show up in your collection base which is really nice all right new future deck cosmetics customization Co the Co cosmetic customizations by deck card back title avatar avatars and titles can now be applied to each deck separately uh, pretty cool. Please know the first time you log in this match, your deck will be changed to the first second. Like, we apologize for the inconvenience. So basically, for those who don't understand what that means, is that if you look at my decks here, you can actually edit, you know, each deck that you want. So say I wanted to play my Galaxy Brain deck, I wanted to change, like, you know, um, my title and stuff, I can I can go here and I can actually set up not just the name of the deck, but the, the card back, uh, you know, to go through your card back, and you can also change your avatar and your title. So that means whenever you actually select your deck, to play you will have a different if you want to a different card back a different uh, picture profile or avatar avatar picture and a uh, title that goes to your picture um i don't care about this feature that much but i think it's nice i think customization is always is always key in these games um i would like to see this now for for cards for separate cards um what i really want to see is once you hit a card to infinite uh or infinity rather i i want the ability to to choose your your border color now i understand not being able to choose the the actual like flares or the the other things that are applied to your cards that's fine um because you, you need to lock them you know those are just rng those are just kind of you just have to keep on splitting right to eventually get your effect that you want however i think you should be able to choose your border once you get that thing to infinite because uh there are definitely certain colors that work better with your flares and your your glimmers and everything like that so i i, I want to see them implement that eventually because it just kind of sucks to feel like oh i unlocked you know my gold back with my gold glimmer and i want to keep the gold border but in order to push on to another split you know, I don't have any more cards. What do I do? I have to keep on splitting this one. So I have to bring it up to infinite or infinity rather. And, and you lose your gold border. So I think that is a, that is an issue for people who are really big about, you know, customization. I think they should change that. So I think we'll see that in, in future releases. Uh, seasonal series drops. Some cards have dropped down to lower series. So a lot of people are predicting these drops and certain things were data mined and everything like that. Uh, these ones are no shocker. Cards dropping from Series 5 to 4, Master Mold, Negasonic, and Nimrod. Series 4 to 3, Sentry, Silver Surfer, Dazzler, Shadow King, Sauron, and Ghost. Um, out of these three, not nothing too big. Nimrod's kind of cool, not that great. Negasonic, she's okay. Master Mold is okay with the Ronin, you know. And just to disrupt your opponent's hand. Other than that, though, not great cards, in my opinion. Uh, Sentry, pretty cool. Uh, he's fun to play around with. Silver Surfer, very good still, uh, even though he got nerfed uh, months ago. Dazzler, uh, not great. Uh, Shadow King, not great. Sauron, still pretty good, decent in uh, Shuri decks as well as some other decks. And Ghost is kind of interesting, but not nothing too strong. Now, this one is a big shock to everyone. Cards staying in Series 4. They are not moving now. Darkhawk and Old. This was a huge turn of events 
or twists, uh, some would say. For me, I was expecting Dark Hawk and Null to drop. I was saving all my reserves to try to, to crack these cards, but they're not dropping. So now you have to either pay 4,000 collector's tokens or just go lucky and pull one in the reserves. I don't know about this decision. I think the reason why they're doing this is because these cards right now are rampant in certain decks. I think this is this is my theory is that one, two, or one, they're extremely strong cards. Extremely strong cards. And two, I think they're worried about breaking the meta. If they go down to series three, people will start cracking them very quickly. And also you'll be able to claim them next month for free. But since they didn't drop, you can't. Darkhawk right now is rampant in the meta. He's been rampant for the past month and this season especially. And Nola has been huge in in Galactus decks, and Galactus is, I think, a deck that everyone hates playing against. So I think that's the reason why they kept them in Series 4. Um, I don't know about this change. I, I, this decision is okay, but, you know, of course, I'm going to be biased because I was really hoping to get Null uh, in Series 3. But we're not going to see that, so we'll have to try to open them up. All right, general updates. Ranked mode. The rank, or the number of cubes required to rank up have decreased from 10 cubes to 7 cubes. Very interesting change. However, though, on, on the, you know... Uh, on the, I guess, uh, other side is that the number of bonus ranks gained when tearing up has been reduced from five ranks to three ranks. Example, when ranking up from 29 to uh, to 30 for the first time, a player will go to rank 33 instead of rank 35. I think this is an interesting change. I think the reason why they did this is because too many people were hitting uh, higher ranks too quickly. They, they felt that, you know, uh, once you got, you know, those, those five extra ranks, this is my theory, is that it was too rewarding and, and there was almost no downside because uh deranking from um from five all the way back down to like 30 or say you went to 35 all the way back to the 30 that was 50 cubes that's a lot of cubes to lose so most of the time you're just not never gonna like really lose that traction that you gain from ranking up and it really did catapult people to infinite very quickly from 70 you know you just go 70 you go up to, you know you start at 70 you go to 80, you know, 80 or 79, you go 85. And then, and then from there, if you didn't lose anything, you literally just have to go from 85 to 90 and then jump you up to 95. So really it'd just be like, you know, and then five more than infinite is very quick. Um, now the one thing to take in, take in, uh, take out from this or keep in mind is that the number of cubes required to rank up has decreased from 10 to seven. Now we have to think about those two ways. One, it takes three less cubes to rank up. However, it also takes three less cubes to de-rank, right? So the thing is, de-ranking, those eight cube snaps are going to be huge. That means whenever you snap for eight cubes, you are either going to de-rank or rank from one game. So those eight cube games are going to be insane. Um, really, really going to have to decide whether or not you want to stay in or you want to leave. Four cubes are going to be huge too. That's going to be half of your rank. Uh, I think this is going to make uh, swings huge in the sense that people are going to be deranking or ranking very quickly. And this is why I think they did this to, to change the tiering as well is because it's going to be so fast that you know to move up and move down. Uh, developer note, we're continuing to make adjustments to rank mode that will improve the overall experience for players. The changes coming with this feature or patch feature feature some adjustments to the matchmaking algorithm and updates to the number of cubes slash ranks while progressing through the season. There are more changes planned for future uh, patches. Uh, sorry, there are more changes planned for future patches. So they are changing the algorithm for matchmaking, which is good. Um, I think this will change. I don't think this will change the meta in, in, in any way. However, I think... Um, it will be interesting to see next season how this affects most players. Okay, when purchasing an item from the shop, you must now press and hold the button to confirm your purchase. This should help reduce slash remove any accidental purchases. Um, I think it's a good change. I have never had this issue, but on a phone, I think it did happen a lot more often. I usually play on desktop, so I have a mouse. I have more control, whereas if you're using your finger to scroll through your phone, you might accidentally click a button. Um... Uh, you'd have to click it twice, but you know either way, or maybe you're just looking at the card you actually you try to get out of it. You know, I've accidentally snapped before doing certain things like that, so uh, I can see how that would happen to some players. The press and hold feature is very good, I think, uh, especially because they do not offer refunds. Added series one and series two labels to cards from those series. I think this is a nice touch, just so you know uh, how you acquired your cards, uh, and you just know like you know was this a season one or season two card. I think that's a that's a nice touch. Now. I don't think they have this currently for three, four, and five. Uh, probably just because they would have to change them of every patch. It'd just be kind of tedious, you know. If you have a season uh, two card or four card, you know, it drops to three. You'd have to change it, and it might get a little bit 
um, dicey when they forget to change it or it doesn't happen to the update or something like that. It just gets confusing. Okay, audio voiceover updates. So they added some voiceover stuff for your different languages, which is nice all the time. And they fixed a bug that would trigger over a card flare SFX in collection screen and in game. Um, over trigger. I remember that thing. That's the Kirby one uh, that makes a really good, loud sound. Okay, balance updates. This is a light tweak relative to the excitement of recent passage in the metagame. As April ended featured or as April edit featured a diverse metagame with healthy win rates and cube gain rates. Only a couple small popularity outliers. We'll have more news for you soon on the future of our OTA balance matches, but today is mostly just a couple of card reworks. Okay, so here's some big changes. Card updates. Kitty Pride. So this is the new one. Released with new design. So this is the one everyone got for free. The old one was 1-0, and you could choose to return it to your hand to give it two, plus 2 power, but you could keep it on the board. So basically... Um, uh, at the beginning of your turn, I believe you could um, choose to pull it back to your hand, and then you would get plus two power. And I think you would have to, uh, and then you would play it again. Something like that. Uh, the new one now is 1-0 as well, but when this returns to your hand, it gets plus two power, and it always returns at the start of each turn. So you can't choose to keep it on the board with its current power. It always returns to your hand, and you have to play it if you want it you know, to, to stay on that board. Um, as we previously announced, Kitty Pride will be returning to the game this week with her new ability. She'll be Series 5 and awarded to all active accounts today. All right, Crystal. I think this is a great change. This is a, a pool 3 card. Uh, it was a 4-4 four, four on reveal. If this is at the middle location, shuffle your hand into your deck and draw 3 cards. Now they change this now to a 4-4 four, four on reveal. Each player draws a card. I think this is very interesting. I think we'll see more Crystal play because drawing cards is a very, very powerful feature in marvel sap there aren't many things that do this adam warlock is one of them other than that there's really not uh too much there Bar baron mordo uh, does does allow you your opponent to draw a card but it, you know it obviously with a deficit um so crystal has been uh one of the handful of cards seeing incredibly low play and win rates for quite some time now an obvious buff candidate we debated maintaining the direction of the current effect by removing the middle restriction increasing the cards drawn etc but the tricky thing is we don't want an effect like crystals to be strong, which is interesting. Uh, stub decks are only 12 cards, and we don't want those cards to play out the same every time. So we're very careful about letting players draw cards. This rework aimed to make a, a simple, appropriate crystal that could be fun alongside a variety of cards. So they don't want her to be very strong, but they want her to be playable. I think this is a good change. Wave old 3, old 3-3 three, three on reveal. Next turn, cards in both players' hands cost 4. New 3-3 three, three on reveal, all cards cost 4 until the next turn. Wave's cost reduction occurs after other effects that reduce card costs. In addition to a text update that clarifies when Wave's effect begins, we have also made a rather large adjustment under the hood. Wave will now begin to apply the after effects that reduce card costs rather than before. That means She-Hulk, Death, etc. will always cost 4 while Wave is in effect. We don't take lightly that this change kills a few uh, kills a few decks, but Wave has been far too constraining on her ability to use cost reduction as a synergy reward in future designs. Leaning on Wave is just always better than dedicating your deck to the actual synergy. Synergy. We've seen that with Death since both cards went live, and we'll continue seeing it without this action. So before, basically, for those who didn't know, a lot of uh, decks like Death Wave, Doom Wave, things like that. The idea was to play wave on turn four, or yeah, to play wave on, on turn five, sorry, for three. So that means you save two because you only played three energy that turn um, out of the five that you had total. And then you would get minus two from She-Hulk. So She-Hulk will go down from six to four cost. And then the wave says all cards are set to four. So in, in this uh, situation, basically, you would end up having um, She-Hulk go down, you know, start at four and get minus two. So she'd actually be two, two energy cost instead of um the four what she'd be now and then if you had something like death she was she you know she's a nine twelve or nine energy and she would go down to four so the thing is you'd have she hulk for two and death for four and you could play both of them on turn six same thing with uh, doom you could play doom and and she hulk as well so you can get you know 15 power on the across the lanes plus that nine power or the 12 power one lane and nine and another uh very very strong was basically the backbone of of death wave and doom wave decks uh, that is gone. That is completely removed. Um, and uh, I guess the biggest one, I guess, is if you ever had Destroy before, uh, now that I think about it, you could literally have Death for zero, She-Hulk for two, and then a Doom for four. That was kind of like your god hand, like last play of the game. You know, putting down, what is that, 27, 36 power on turn six. Absolutely insane. But now, no, the best you could ever do is just play... 
uh, one card for the most part, unless you have cost reduction like Sarah or you have Elysium, then you can play two, two, three cost cards. Um, I do think Wave is now going to be a, a disruption card and not so much a, um, you know, a, a card that allows you to play a lot of cards. So Wave is going to be used for either getting out that Galactus on turn four, getting out that Sandman on turn four, or, or either, um, you know, disrupting your, your, Sarah, your opponent's Sarah on turn six, um, or, or any like hit monkey type of, type of Moon Girl, uh, She-Hulk shenanigans, uh, you can play that out and disrupt that hand. Uh, I think this is a good change. It does kill a few decks, like they said, but I mean, I think the idea is they're trying to take away big, huge power on turn six, which is understandable because most of the decks in the meta right now are putting out a lot of power on turn five or turn six. Uh, Death, old, and nine, two, cost one less for each card of this game. They, they actually um, buff Death, but I think that's because of the wave change. So now she's eight, 12, cost one less. So she is easier to get out. However, uh, she will not be able to just sit on the, or ride that wave, right? As Death's current performance is essentially dependent on Wave of Galactus, we want to improve her playability in other decks now that the interaction with Wave has, wave has changed. This may not be enough, and we see, and if we see Death take a huge dive, we'll come back and look at how these values can be adjusted further to ensure Death remains a meaningful card for dedicated destroy decks. I think we're not going to see Death um, as much, which could be good, could be bad, but I think we're going to see her still a lot in Galactus, and I think we're going to still see her a lot in Hela. And there might just be pure Death decks out there too, now that Venom was buffed. Uh, white queen text only change old text four six on reveal draw a copy of the highest cost card in your opponent's hand now it just says copy the highest cost card in your opponent's hand into your hand uh this is just text revision to resolve some ongoing confusion about what white queen exactly does and how it interacts with cards like widow's bite so for those who don't know widow's bite while this is in your hand you cannot draw cards uh in the future we may pursue establishing some kind of a shorthand for copying cards into your hand but for now we're just going to with the clearest expression of the card's function so just before the way it would work, if Widow's Bite was your hand, you and you played White Queen, you still would get a copy of, of your opponent's card, uh, even though it says draw. So that's why they changed this around. In a different video, we'll talk about the um, card acquisition stuff too. But yeah, these are big changes. I think, I think in terms of um, how it's going to disrupt the meta is pretty big with the Death Wave, Doom Wave types stuff we've been seeing. Um, but other than that, I don't think we're going to see much more Dark Darkhawk because it's not dropping the pull through. We're not going to see as many Null decks. I think we're still going to see just as much Galactus, if not more, because of Death. Um, but we will see less Death Wave, Doom Wave, uh, either for the better or for the worse. That's pretty much it on balance changes.